The road to Tampa Bay has brought us to Stores, Connecticut, and here right outside of the court at Gamble Pavilion on the campus of the University of Connecticut, alongside with Danny Breslauer, the voice of Rutgers women's basketball for WCTC. I'm Mark Sell. Thank you so much for joining us here on Our Vision. And Danny, it seems that the selection committee couldn't have drawn this up any better. It's like a Big East rivalries renewed. Rutgers goes up against Seton Hall, and the winner presumably against Connecticut. I mean, how about this? Yeah, it is a little bit of a conference renewed element here today uh, with Rutgers and Seton Hall getting a chance to practice on the same court once again. Of course, UConn and St. Francis Brooklyn on the other side. Rutgers will see one of those two if they were able to get through Seton Hall. So the opportunity to have some of these Northeast schools play here at Gamble Pavilion. I know Rutgers is excited. I'm sure Seton Hall is excited as well. And, and UConn gets to see a couple of their former conference mates. Well, it's shaping up to be a pretty fantastic weekend here in Stores, Connecticut. Seton Hall makes the tournament for the first time since 1995. Rutgers for the first time in three years and obviously both of these schools know each other pretty well from their days in the Big East Conference but as well as last year, Danny, in a thrilling double overtime win by Rutgers in the WNIT. Yeah, certainly round of 16 in that one, 91 to 79, Rutgers winning in double overtime. It had all the elements, transition basketball, three-pointers on the Seton Hall end. Tabitha Richardson-Smith hit five of them, but the Scarlet Knights were just a little bit too much late. Brianna Canty hit one of two free throws with .2 seconds left to send that game to overtime in the first place, and Rutgers really blitzed Seton Hall after that. They were able to get up and down the court, execute their offense, and they'll have to do the same on Saturday in order to win. And I was going to ask you one last question going off of that big win from last year. How can that carry into Rutgers a year later as we go into tomorrow night here in stores? Well, I think it's less what that game can show and more what the rest of the WNIT run did. And that's put Rutgers in a postseason mindset, the ability to go out and win six straight games, a few of them on the road, and win a championship. So against Seton Hall here where there's going to be a mixed base of fans, of course. UConn fans will be there. Who knows who they root for? And then you have Seton Hall fans and Rutgers fans will get a chance to make the short trip up as well. So Rutgers in terms of stylistically, they know Seton Hall. Deja Simmons is really the only difference and the Scarlet Knights of course know her because she was a part of the Rutgers program. And then on the other end you have a lot of the similar cast for Rutgers all a year older. So as long as they continue to do what they do well, hit mid-range jumpers, get out and transition, keep the tempo where they want it, I think Rutgers will be in good shape. 6.30 Saturday night, everything taking place just to our right here on the court here at Gamble Pavilion and keep it right here locked to our vision throughout the rest of the weekend. We'll have some more behind the scenes videos and if Rutgers wins you'll see more of this guy in a couple of days. Reporting from Gamble Pavilion here in stores alongside Danny Breslauer, I'm Mark Sell right here on ScarletKnights.com.